Hey guys, my name is Rodney Banta, otherwise known as Rodney, and this is your D&D channel. So I'm doing something a little bit different. I know I got the hand shaky cam going on, and I'm sorry about that. But what I wanted to do today was break down this glorious table I've got here and explain how cheap it was to build and how easy it was to build. So what you're going to be looking at at maximum cost, at least in my area, was $30. Now you could go more expensive if you wanted a thicker vinyl, but just in general, 30 bucks is all you're going to need to usually spend. That's 30 US. I don't know if you're in UK if vinyl is more expensive or something, but over here it's pretty cheap to get clear plastic vinyl. So first thing you're going to need is a clear plastic vinyl. And what this serves the purpose of is it is an easy, let me grab a dry erase marker over here, it is an easy dry erasable material. You can dry erase on it, blah, 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 and it erases, no biggie whatsoever. So that's going to be your first thing is it's dry erasable. The next thing you're going to need to get is a grid. Now grids, I thought of many different options when I was looking to build this table. First I thought, okay, what if I take a Dremel, you know, set up a guide and cut inch by inch grid slots and then pour in black epoxy resin. I thought that for a really long time, but then when I was at the fabric store planning to do that, I came across a, a uh, it's called like a uh, cutting guide for fabric. It's something that you would sew with like a sewing machine onto the back of another piece of fabric and then eventually take off. But what it's designed to do is allow you to have a guide to cut properly and size everything perfectly. But it's really great because it's white and it's got a blue gridded pattern on it. So as you can see, my table is gridded. And it's very easy, oh shoot, I'm going the wrong way. It's very easy to see the grid, it's very easy to work with the grid, and it's still all dry erasable. But if you just buy those two things, your table color is gonna show through because that cutting guide is very thin. So there's one more thing you gotta get, and it, oh yeah, by the way, the cutting guide was a, like, I think it was $2 a yard. So I bought three yards, I actually bought six, but I only needed three. I gave the other to a friend so he could build a D&D &D table. But it was super cheap. It might actually, I think it was somewhere like 30 cents a yard. It was stupid, stupid cheap. And so I bought six yards. And that, let's just say that cost me $5, which is honestly more expensive than it was. So at 15. Finally, the last thing you need to do is our cheapest, cheapest thing. It is um, party. Uh, uh, you can find it at any party store. It's a, uh, a tablecloth. That's what it is. It's party tablecloth for children's birthday parties. It comes in all varieties of colors, but I recommend white just because it makes a nice clean looking grid. But if you found it in like a brown, it wouldn't look bad either. But this, it's just a plastic sheet that is stark white. So I laid that down and that one was like a dollar for like 300 feet of it. So, you know, you might even have that line around the house, you know, in an attic or, or whatever. If your parents used to use it on your birthdays because you get it so cheap and at minimum amount is huge bulk. So you'll never run out of it, and it's usually just around somewhere. I actually found some in my garage. I didn't even have to buy it. But when I went to look for it, it was so cheap that I, I was going to buy it. And then my, I, I was talking to my grandma about it the day before, and she was like, oh, we have some of that. So I was like, that's perfect. So I just took that, and I was like, okay, how can I use this? Because like I said, originally I had the Dremel plan, and I didn't know if that was going to help me, but she was the one who recommended it. It's not exactly like she was that, like, you should do this. What it was is I was asking her for ideas. And she was like, well, I think if you laid this down and then you just put some sort of uh, clear grid on it, maybe you could draw it on with a marker. It'll be fine. But then eventually I took that idea and, I t and, it, and it eventually became this table, which is just my favorite thing. It's the best table I've built yet. Um, so anyway, you lay down that white cheap fabric or white cheap uh, tablecloth. It's incredibly cheap to buy. And I just had some in my garage, but even then it's like, like a dollar. It might be $5 depending on what party store you're at, but you could probably find that at a place like a dollar tree. If you have that any place that's just real cheap party supplies, you can find it. Um, then you lay down your gridded fabric, uh, cutting guide and finally your vinyl and boom, you got the perfect D and D table. You buy it per size. It has a beautiful to look at grid, very easy to work with. Now, now that I've broken down the actual table itself, I want to go ahead and tell you guys some things about the, uh, the setup I use. So if you're looking for the minimum price, which is where I started, I didn't have a lot of money. So if you're looking for the minimum price, what you can do to get indicators is you can buy these counting circles. They are to teach children how to count. They're red on one side, yellow on the other, and you can get them in a multitude of colors. They sell them to kindergarten teachers, but they're in huge bulk for really cheap. Like you can get like a hundred of them for like I think it was like five bucks. So now we're up to $20, maybe $22 if you got the yellow plastic. I got that for free. But you can buy that. I bought a hundred of them and then just individually went through and numbered them so that if I wanted to have an eight, you know, eight enemies out, I could have one through eight orcs. And then if I wanted to have 16 out, I could have one through six, one through eight, but then eight of them are yellow. 
really easy. Some, if you want to denote there's a captain, you turn him yellow or red or whatever. Um, but that is not the best solution. That's easy. It works. It does the job. But there's a much better solution. Now, this when I bought it, it ran at $20. But nowadays it's more like 50 because it's become a bit of a collector's item. And I think what's happened is there's a lot of people who have discovered that it's perfect for D&D. So what you'll find is there's a board game called Risk. Most people know of it. But there's a version of it called Risk Godstorm. It's a version where you control, you can summon gods, you can go to the afterlife, all kinds of stuff. It's a lot more complicated. But it comes with these little miniatures. Like this is a blue Zeus. It comes with five different colors of units and four different gods of each color. But what it really comes with that's, that's cool is it comes with these little soldiers. These soldiers, it comes with 50 of each color. So it's 250 soldiers plus 30 from the, or 20 more. So it's 270 different units for 50 bucks. If you break that down, you're basically pay, paying like less than 25 cents per unit. And you're getting a, a, like four player characters of each color and 50 random grunts of each color. So that works really well. They, they fit an inch by inch grid just about perfectly. They're a little too narrow, but for their height, you'll see. I'm going to go ahead and show you with this little Zeus down here. He's a little too small, you know, just a hair too small for the actual grid. Gosh, I'm terrible with this. A little too small for the grid itself, but you'll find that even though he's a little too small or whatever, he fits very well with his height. So it's, it's a very good thing when you're like, well, a human doesn't traditionally stand in five feet wide, you know, so it works very well. The next thing you're going to want to look at if you're looking for indicators that are really cheap is you can get your hands on a, the Magic the Gathering uh, uh, hexagonal board game. I don't remember what it's called, but me and my brother each got one for Christmas one year and it comes with a bunch of little uh, monsters. Like it comes with like, for instance, the, here's a perfect example of an anthropomorphic rhino, a very powerful race but very, very usable because it's just a nice, large class warrior looking dude. You also get like ogres, like here's an ogre. You get um, undead, like here's a zombie with a, with a war axe. And, but it, what it really comes with that my players absolutely adore is it comes with planeswalker figures for each of the major planeswalkers. So you get like Liliana or whatever, and it comes with four different ones, maybe it was five, and we each got a set. So it made our tabletop play just that much better because now there was even more variety than just our little blue Zeuses. We could actually play somebody that had color on them, which was interesting. Another good way to source parts is if you can get your hands on hero clicks. Like here's a hero clicks white dragon. It actually fits the grid for a young adult white dragon perfectly. Next you have, we have a hero clicks blue dragon. See if I can get him on the camera. That guy, he's actually a little too small for a blue dragon of young adult, but if you wanted to say he's a juvenile blue dragon, it fits perfectly. Uh, Hero Clicks is a little more expensive, but it's really not compared to when you look at like a Dungeons and Dragons legitimate designed uh, miniature. But anyway, guys, that's going to be our layout for this uh, whole D&D room. I'm going to give you one more pan around so you can see what we've got going on. Behind me here is what we call the Wall of Death. Every time a player character dies in a campaign, we put them up on the Wall of Death, which is interesting. And you can see over the years, we've got like, I'm not even going to count, but something like 12 people up there. We also have some posters around just to give it some flavor. Like, uh, I don't even know, this is some sort of pyramid with an earth on top or whatever, some plane. We've got some other, you know, cool looking artwork of a moon, probably for elves or something. And we got this big, nice, big screen TV in the background, which you might see in some of my other videos. That's really good for if you want to throw a map up there. You know, you just get the world map up there. There you go. Easy as pie. And you'll see we actually even have out from where we were using it. We got a keyboard out here because the DM can just hook his computer up right over there. Have a little laptop monitor, whatever you want. And he can work on that. Throw things up there as he sees fit. Now, um... The table itself is definitely worth the money, very cheap, but we got to invest in some chairs. We're using the, like I said, we, we are cheap people. Um, we have these good old fashioned steel nonsense chairs. I think they might even be aluminum. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take it out of there because the light was getting all crazy. But anyway, guys, my name is Rodney Banta. This was your D&D &D channel, and I hope you have a really nice day.